Hey everyone! So today we're going to learn how to use Marvis Designer with ZBrush. So I have a few base meshes for female and males. I'll be explaining on the female base mesh how to import a new avatar, how to use it in Marvis Designer to create the clothing, how to go into ZBrush and import that actual model plus the cloth, and how to fix everything up in ZBrush to have seamless and no problems with uh, with the actual mesh because sometimes when you actually import from Marvelous to ZBrush you will get a problem with thickness where you will get the Swiss uh, Swiss cheese effect with Dynamesh and you don't want to have that. So let's start here. First thing I'm going to do is clear my avatar. So avatar here, clear all avatars, grab all of these, delete on my keyboard and sync. So I have a fresh new page. Now I need to get one of my avatars. So file, import, obj, and I have the new one right here. So very important, load as avatar, clicked on, auto scale, don't click any of these, just go auto scale and just say OK. So I have the base mesh here and I have the silhouette over here. So let's start doing very basic stuff. I want to create a shirt, pants and a kind of a, a coat or something like that. So let's get going here. So I created one pattern, click on this one, on this uh, segment, unfold, grab this one, control C, control V, sorry, control C, right click, symmetrical paste on the side right here. Make sure you rotate this 180, move it back and fix it up where it's supposed to be. Now, something I like to do here because the female anatomy is a bit different. You have the chest, you have the stomach and you have the back. So what you wanna do here for a seamless simulation is Rotate this a little bit this way, rotate that a little bit this way. You want the first seams to simulate are going to be the shoulder ones. Okay, so let's get going here. I grab my sew tool, outside first, inside next. Outside with outside, inside, inside. So I'm going to start here. I'm actually going to do these ones as well. So outside inside. So these are my inside. This is the outside, outside, just so everybody can keep that in mind. And I'm going to simulate this. So continue the simulation. Make sure that this is not sticking to anything. Make sure the arms are free. So the trick to Marvelous is do not simulate everything together. It won't work properly. You need to simulate piece by piece. Just take your time with doing this. There we go. Next I'm going to simulate, I'm going to sew the bottom. So outside, inside, and simulate. There we go. So let's fix up the shirt a little bit here. Now a small trick I like to use is one, this folding action is happening over here. It's happening because there's too much fabric at work. So I need to lessen the amount of fabric by diminishing or reducing the size of these panels. But one thing I want to do as well is grab this tool right here. I want to click on this vertex, this vertex, it's symmetrical, so we don't need to do that. These two, right click on them and say convert to curve points. This will ease the strain on here. Convert to curve points, there we go. Very good, so this piece right here needs to be a little bit shorter, so I'm just going to move this here and move this here. There we go, and I can drop this down a little bit more to remove that fold that you see here, right there. All right, that's good enough. The back, I need to fix that. So what I do here is, since I'm done with everything symmetrically, I can right click on this one and remove symmetry. This is the back. Remove symmetry just so I can take this point and convert it to a curve point. There we go, you can do this or Control Z, grab it, move it up, and right click it, convert to curve point. That way it just gives you that little curve right here. Great. Next, pants. So what I want to do is create a shirt. On top of it, there's going to be a jacket, All right, just to keep that in mind. So pants, I'm going to go pretty high here. Again, create shorts first and then create the pants. There we 
There we go. This segment unfold. Control C, right click, symmetrical paste, right next to it. Very good. So this one is really into the mesh, so I just want to move it out just a tiny bit. This one, rotate 180. Push it back. And now we're going to face a problem because her backside is kind of big. So we need to fix that appropriately. So let me do this first so it sticks correctly. Move it a bit to the left. There we go. So inside first. Outside. There we go. Just make sure everything's correct. Good, and simulate. Now, this is working perfectly. Sometimes this will be a bit lower, so you have to adjust the back end. So right here, if this is too low, you remove the symmetry. I drop this down a little bit, and I move these two edges a little bit higher up. So watch what happens. I just get a little bit more mesh over here. Great. That worked really well. So I want to do as well a small little adjustment on these points. Raise them up. There we go. Great. Next, the rest of the pants. So I'm going to grab a normal square. Control copy, control V. I don't have to do a symmetry here, it's fine. You can if you want to, but it's going to stick pretty much straight away. Grab these two. Actually, you know what? Yes, we are going to. Copy, right click, symmetrical paste. My software might lag a little bit, but it's all gonna be fine. I have a bit of an older PC, so. One, two, control C, right click, control V. Oop, sorry, control C, control V, right here. So I'm just gonna move these to the side. go. They're going to be a bit too long, so I'm going to grab these. Sorry. Gonna grab these. Same? Okay. Shorten the front and then shorten the back. Sew them together, so we got Outside, good, inside, this one goes here, and this one goes here. So again, if you're unsure what goes where, where you're going to be sewing, pretty much, you just click on the fabric, shift click on the other end, on the edge, and you see that this one goes right here, okay? And I'm going to make sure to get, so this one is going to go here. Good. The front on the other leg. This one goes here. And this one goes here. Let's simulate this.
Perfect. So my simulation is running really slow, so what I'm going to do here is just to increase the polygon size or the particle system size just because it will help me explain a bit better. So I'm going to go to 40. Now you're going to get these little dots everywhere, that's fine, just because my quality is really, really bad right now, but at least I can move and simulate correctly. So that's one thing we can do here. Next we're going to do a kind of a coat or jacket kind of style of a thing. Let me move everything to the side. There we go. So for the coat or for kind of a jacket, it's a bit different. You start like a shirt. So I like to do, instead of a sleeve, just go directly like this. And do not close this. So just keep it to exactly where it is, just like I'm doing. This is the center of the character. Do not let it close. And what you do here is Control C, right click, mirror paste on the side and try to line it up as best you can, like so. Okay, let's take these. Rotate them just a little bit and move them forward. A little bit more. There we go. Control C, symmetrical paste on the back side. So rotate these 180. Move it back. And put it into position. So slowly start simulating. Don't go crazy. Just start with the top end. Just so that the shoulders can connect first. Very good. The underarms, so right here. This piece, and this piece. And what we're going to do here is, in the back area only, grab the middle piece. There we go. And simulate. Let it just finish the simulation. This is still 20, so let me just adjust this to 40. There we go. It's still gluing itself to the mesh, so I'm going to have to just fix it up a little bit here. And it completely fell. So one thing you can do here, let me just control Z. Okay. One thing you can do here is pin the actual surface of the object to something. Pinning is basically when you go to a tailor, they grab a small little needle and they pin the cloth on another piece just to adjust it perfectly. And you can do this inside of Marvelous. So what I'm going to do first here is remove all of these by just selecting your seam edge, your, your sewing, sorry, editor. Right click, delete. Delete. Now your pin tools are right here. So you have edit the, the actual tack. This is to tack on a, a certain amount of uh, fabric and then you have on the avatar itself. So what we want to do is use this one, the tack on another surface, and we use the t-shirt as the surface we're going to tack to. So let me simulate this very quickly, just so that it gets to this point. Perfect, that's it. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to grab, this is the jacket, this is the shirt. I'm going to ask this piece, so tack, click here, click here, click here, click here, so don't forget there are two pieces right here. I'm also going to do the same. So click here, click right here. The 
this one will not work properly, so let me just simulate a little bit here. There we go. So these will stay in place. Very important. And now let's try again. Outside. Inside. Outside. Inside. The problem with this character is that it's in an A pose, meaning that these will actually glue themselves to the actual character, which is something we don't want to happen, but we don't have much of a choice. We have to work around this area. So let's try simulate as best as we can here. Slowly unfurling it, just so that it doesn't touch the pants. I don't want the pants to change in any way or form. Let me make sure everything's okay. Over here, very good. And now we can stick the back. So this one is dropping. Stop the simulation, Control Z. So what I want to do is just move it a little bit to the side. There we go, just so I can tack this one to this. Another one right here. Good, and let's get a few other ones as well. So let's look at the back of the character. Right here to here. Right here to here. And also I'm gonna grab this one and put it in the middle. And this one to put in the middle, just to help it start the simulation first. All right, let's see this. So the front is causing a small issue as well. So right here to here, right here to here. Let's hope this will help it out. Good, here to here. here to here. Let me help it out. So what the problem is, what, sorry, what's the problem right here is that you're getting a small little issue with the amount of fabric you have. There's not enough. So it's causing this kind of a stretching effect to happen. So let's give it a little bit more room to breathe here. Let me space these out. Sorry. Space this, give this a bit more space, there we go. And all I'm gonna do is just add a little bit more fabric to help it out. There we go. Much better. Now the tack will do this effect, that's perfectly fine. We're okay with this. We're gonna remove the tacks later on just until we can get the simulation where we want it to be. Let me glue the back. Good. Front stays still. Let me just make sure that this is unfurling correctly. All right, and we can remove the tacks over here. So edit tack, and I can just click on this one. So stop the simulation. Click on this one, delete on your keyboard. This one, delete on the keyboard. I'm gonna keep these for now. There we go, the mesh starts relaxing on this point. Very good. And now on the front. So what I can do here is something very simple. This is the front. I can click on this seam, right click, say split, and say okay. What this does, it creates a new vertex right here. I'm gonna do the same here. Click here, right click, split, and say okay. And I can sew just this piece right here to help it along to stay exactly where I want it to be. There we go. Stop the simulation, grab your tacks, and start removing these so that the mesh can relax a little bit more. And finally this one. And simulate just so everything relaxes properly. There we go.
good. Let me make sure there's enough room here. Why is this still in the same? Let me just fix this up. One, two, three, four. Particle distance, 40. Just so I can have more motion here. There we go. And now for the arms. Now, since it's an A pose, that's going to be a bit tricky. T pose would have been so much easier. We just put some squares and just adjust them to correctly, and we'll be fine. Here, it's going to be a bit different. So I need to kind of visualize it in that sense. So let me grab all of these, move them up. I'm going to keep the tacks on the top because they're not bothering me. They're not moving or changing shapes in any way. And it's perfectly fine. All I'm going to do here, though, is just move these a little bit more to the top. Oh, symmetrical paste is on, so let me see. Yep. There we go. And now the arms. So you can grab a normal polygon and do it this way. This should work immediately to show exactly where it is. Perfect. And I'm going to snap this. Control copy, control V. So I need the mirror. Control C, right click, mirror. Go to the other side, grab both of these, Control c right-click, symmetrical paste, right here. And these are going to rotate. It's getting close enough, perfect. So, be very careful here. This, you need the reference. You need to have a bit of help. So click here, shift click on this one. I know that this piece goes that, in that direction. So this goes all the way here. This piece with this piece, right there. Again, to make sure that you do this correctly, click here, shift click on the mesh in 3D and you know exactly where you're supposed to go. So this one, oh, Sorry, these are bad sews. I'm sewing on the shirt itself. That's not correct. I need to sew on the jacket. So it should go there. So what I do is hit the shoulder. There we go. This has to go all the way here. There we go. This one over here. Control B to reverse the sewing here. This one over here, so shift click. This one over here. Everything's good. This piece to this piece, so outside, inside, outside inside. Very good. Stop the simulation and I want to create a little bit more of a form here. So I would like to increase the size of this. So I'm just going to poke this a little bit higher. just to show you what I mean. There we go, okay, that's a little bit too much. So we just reduce this little vertex right here. And this one as well, just a little bit. Much better. Very good. Same goes for here. So stop the simulation. Let's 
somewhere here. It's okay if it crosses path, just gonna take these and move them a bit to the side so it doesn't bother me. This one, just a little bit larger, and that's it. Keep an eye on the hand, because it might go through the hand, which is a big problem. So here it kind of did. Let me stop the simulation and make sure that these are 40 as well. Just to be a bit easier for me to simulate around. So I went through the thumb. There we go. So something simple, elegant, fun, you can do whatever you want on this one. So now how do you jump from here to ZBrush? How can I add more details? How can I fix all of this inside of ZBrush? This is what we're going to do next. So I'm going to keep this mesh exactly the way it is. To export it, I basically select all of this, just like so, and I say File, Export, OBJ selected, because you can actually export the mesh itself, which I don't want to do. Go here, call it Garment Female, save. And now you're going to do it as a single object welded and make sure that it's right here, 100%. You can do it in centimeter, which is fine as well. Uh, let's see the different scaling. Now the problem is going to be the scales. Always have been, always will be. You're going to have problems with scaling. So don't worry about that. I'm going to show you exactly how to fix it. So say OK. So this is done. I'm going to keep it open anyways. Let's go to ZBrush. This video might be a little bit long, but it's going to be fine. We just have the final steps on how to adjust everything inside of ZBrush to make it very good. So I'm running ZBrush 2020, just for anybody who's asking, and it was Marvis Designer 4. The same technique appear and work for every single Marvis Designer you want to use. 7, 7.5, 8, and then you 9. So here I'm going to import. The first thing I'm going to import is the mesh itself. I need to fix it up. Desktop, garment female, open and press F immediately on your keyboard. If you don't see it, just click and drag. There it is. So it might be low polygon, that's perfectly fine, do not worry. Okay? So a few things you have to do first. One, make sure that it's centered perfectly on the floor. That is. So by clicking on floor in perspective, I know that it's perfectly centered. Great. Next, I need to fix the meshes. So, subtool, split, split to similar parts, Say okay. So I can have every single piece on its own. All right. Next, each one is going to be remeshed. So, geometry, Z remesher, remesh. This is pretty decent. Good. Subtool, the shirt, Z remesh. Subtool, pants, zebra mesh. Step number one. Okay. Step number two, you're going to have to increase the size because basically right now it's invisible, as you can see here. It's one single sided polygons, which is not okay. So, what you want to do is create a bit of a thickness on the clothing itself. That way, you have more control in the future. All right. So, let's do that first on the shirt. I go to B, Z, and I choose Z modeler. Make sure my line fill is on. There we go. So I select the polygon. Space, all polygons, Q mesh is on. So what I'm going to do is click and just drag it out a little bit. There we go. So now I have thickness and I can see the back. Alt click on the shirt, do the same exact thing. So the brush doesn't have to be this big, honestly, just something small. There we go. And the pants, alt click on the pants to change subtools and click and drag. There we go, that's enough. That's all you need. This amount of thickness. Next, I'm gonna merge everything. So merge, merge down, say okay, merge down, say okay. So they're one single polygroup. There we go. Uh, one single object, sorry, not polygroup. Perfect, so we have everything we need right now. I'm gonna make this into a make polymesh 3D. Very important and I'm gonna show you why. There we go. Next, I'm going to import. 
So here you can just close this. Control N. I'm going to import my female base mesh. Open. Click and drag it. Uh, wait, it's not centered perfectly, so. Let me see. It is. Great. To remove the line fill so I can see what I'm doing. Remove the floor for a second. And I'm just going to go into append. And I'm going to get the actual garment. Now it's going to be a bit bigger. That's fine. The scaling is going to be a bit of an issue. So what you do is just select the garment. And try to perfectly place the garment on the character. Let me remove this. I don't need it. Really take your time doing this. Do not move left and right, scale uniformly and move the mesh into place as best you can. As close as you can. This is pretty good. Great. Okay, stop there. And now we're going to do a small adjustment. So BMV, symmetry on. Make sure symmetry is perfectly aligned. That's exactly what we're looking for. Everything is perfect. The entire mesh is symmetrical. So here, all we're going to do is just move very slightly small little pieces just so that it fits. Good. Right here we have a bit of an issue. You can use your masks just to be able to help you with this process. So right here it's a pretty bad disaster, so let's try to fix it up. The mesh is a bit too complex. What I'm going to do here is actually scale this down like so, just a little bit, and then move it up just a little bit, just for the feet. Great. A little bit more. That's it. Just to help ease this tension right here. So back to draw, and I'm just going to move these slightly. Move it a bit more than you think you need to, just because there is the skin and there is a bit of thickness on the object, so you don't want it to be glued to the character, so let me just smooth this out a little bit here. Move it back into place, there we go. Fantastic. And now you can just continue working just normally, everything will be perfect. So the last step I like to do here is select my garment and just split it back into the way it was. So multiple pieces, that way I can have more control over every single piece I'm working for. For example, the shirt completely disfigured. So let me alt-click it, see what I mean? So let's just fix it up. Here it seems that I might have smoothed it a little bit too much. So if in any case the shirt is too rough or there's a big of a problem, the jacket works perfectly well. So we saw the jacket is very well placed. What I can do here is actually remove the shirt. So delete that shirt and actually can create a new one. So I can go to my female base mesh, delete everything, select my masking tool right here. Let me just make sure symmetry is on.
here we go. Let me just remove a bit here. And just extract that just the way it is. Uh, not too thick, so that's a five. I'm gonna remove it to one. Extract. Still too big. Oh, sorry, thickness 0 0.02, so 0 0.01. A little bit better. Accept this. Smooth out the edges completely. I might have messed up a small little piece here, but it's fine. It won't show. There we go, we have our shirt back. So what I can do is just increase my size right here and shift click, reduce the Z intensity for my smoothing brush and just go over it very quickly, just to help it along. There we go, input back the jacket. Alt click on the jacket. And just move things back a little bit. And there we go. And now you can completely start working on your character just the way you're supposed to, but at least you won't have any problems with uh, dynameshing or <clears throat> the Swiss cheese effect that you see all the time when you're dynameshing something. Uh, because we fixed the thickness, we fixed the geometry, the topology, and everything about that. So now it's just very simple. You can just grab this, just Control D it all the way, or even dynamesh it and Control D, but I prefer just going straight for Control D here. All right. And you can just adjust the small little pieces that you need to adjust. Now I have a few brushes and I'm going to upload them for my students. Uh, I'll even give you the reference where they come from in the description. They are uh, brushes for fabrics. So load brush, I have a few here. I have stitches, I have wrinkles, bed sheets, I have uh, uh, wrinkles on the couch. So stitches comes with the pre-alpha and uh, everything you need here. And what it does basically is just creates a pattern of uh, stitches. So control D, let me increase the subdivisions here, just so you can see it a bit better. There we go. Control D one more time. There you go. So they're very fine stitches. And it's pretty nice to use just because you can do stuff like grab from here and just go all the way down to create that little extra detail. Maybe around the borders here. It's not very symmetrical, but it's fine. You can actually do a small little symmetry here. And the other ones, for an example, I can load a new brush, so load brush, and I can get the wrinkled couch. It's a very nice brush. It's also a drag rectangle, but I can basically do stuff like this. So you can increase intensity just a little bit on my Z right here, and just create those little wrinkles. to give the shirt a bit more definition. Maybe the pants as well, so control D, control D, control D, and just give it a little bit more, you know. Deformities. BMV over here, let me just move this backwards a bit. I put everything into a clay white so I can see a little bit better the changes that I need to see. Mm -hmm. 
and then you can start with the hair, you can start designing whatever you feel like, so load brush, I can get maybe bed cheese wrinkles, that also works well. I can add flat fabric. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial, so I hope it helps, and please if you like the content, like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment if you want something specific, because this was a request for my students, and I hope this helps for their final project. So good luck everyone, and uh, please if you have any questions just contact me, you know the way to contact me, and you can leave a comment if you're not one of my students. So uh, please stay safe guys during this corona time, and I hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!